The grandstand cameras went to Port Melbourne for round 17 in the VFL and Frankston coach Simon Goosey was in the expert comments chair. Simon, we're expecting to see a comprehensive win for Port Melbourne. We got a four-goal victory in the end, but it was hard for Yes, definitely after quarter time, you know, Sandringham really took it up to Port Melbourne and made a game of it, whereas they hit the front in the last quarter. Could have went either way. We just saw Corey McGrath. That was in the first 28 seconds of the game. Port kicked two goals in two minutes. Galea coming up with this goal uh, from the pocket after two minutes, and you thought, well, this could be an absolute massacre. They led by 29 points uh, in the first quarter, 28 points at quarter time, but to Sandy's credit, they really gritted their teeth and fought back hard. Yeah, they did fight back. Early on there, Port Melbourne just had control of the ball. Sandringham couldn't get their hands on the ball. And they locked it down a bit in the second quarter as well. They used it a lot better than Port Melbourne did in the second term. Port hadn't lost a second quarter all season, and it was three goals, three to two goals, one in the second term in favour of the Zebras. 20 points down at half time, though. You'd still think that the task was going to be pretty tough for them. But once again, they were able to win the quarter. Yeah, they did. They, they fought back really, really good. And you see there that the Fords actually held their, held their ground and didn't push too far up the ground. Lowry managing a goal there. Boland was pretty important for Sandy as well. Now, this is in the first 30 seconds or so of the third quarter. Uh, Nicholas Winmar didn't apply a very good tackle there, and Miles Pitt made them pay. And with the first two goals of the third term, again, it was a bit like we were expecting at the start of the game. Here comes Port. They're going to roll over the top of them. Yeah, and yeah, once again, Sandringham fought back, which was, um, you know, I think they gained the ball out the centre and give their forwards an opportunity. After Sinclair kicked that goal, it was 32 points the difference. Curran sneaks out the back door here, got one at the 10 minute mark, and they kicked the next four goals. So they kicked the last four goals of the third quarter, got it back to eight points the difference at three quarter time. As we said, Boland very impressive coming up with a couple of goals. And then at the start of the last quarter, Sandy kicked the first two. All of a sudden, they led by two points after seven minutes, and a huge upset was on the cards. Yeah, too right, and I think Boland had another shot to put yeah. him a little bit more further in front, but he, he missed it, and Port took it up the other end and got a goal and gained back the momentum. And we kept on talking about the fact that the good teams find a way to win, even when they're not playing at their best, and that's precisely what Port Melbourne did. Yeah, they're an experienced side, and, um, you know, on this ground they're even harder to beat. And, of course, they had the 19th man, them, the crowd. Um, crowd always helps to get Port over the line. And Ryan McMahon in his 200th game coming up with a day that he's going to remember. Sam Dwyer was cleaned up on the siren, but cool heads prevailed. And Port Melbourne eventually, with the last four goals of the game, winning by 24, but it certainly wasn't that easy. 13-16-94 to Sandy, 10 goals, 10-70. Port remains undefeated, and Ryan McMahon can celebrate in game number 200.